Hey everybody, it's the coach, and this is Madden 19 on EA Sports. Straight ahead, we've got a great one on tap between the Tennessee Titans and the Miami Dolphins. With that, let's get down to Hard Rock Stadium in Miami. Standing by for the call, here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Thank you, Coach. From beautiful South Florida, there's a look at Hard Rock Stadium in Miami. A second ago, the Dolphin offense led out onto the field by their veteran quarterback, Ryan Tannehill. He and his mates in for a tough one as they get set to match up with the Tennessee Titans. Welcome again, everybody, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and yes, the rain is falling now, and it is supposed to continue to fall throughout this game. So how do you think that will impact this contest? Well, first and foremost, both quarterbacks are going to make sure the officials have those dry footballs coming in each and every play and standing over them sometimes with a towel before the center gets up there to snap it. Second thing is the focus of all the guys who handle the football. Do they wear gloves? Do they take them off? Will they carry the ball high and tight to make sure they have good ball security? That's paramount in a game like this. Jakeem Grant now to return. Then he'll take this across the 25. A couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. So here come the Dolphins now as they get set to take over on offense. They will be led out by their seventh-year quarterback from Texas A&M, Ryan Tannehill. Unfortunately for Ryan Tannehill, as the improvement was starting to develop in the NFL, two knee injuries in the last two seasons. The second one cost him all of 2017. Right now, if you watch the Dolphins, you believe as Ryan Tannehill goes, so do the Dolphins. run back to the line of scrimmage and that's it Rashawn Evans out of Alabama had the tackle defensively time to feature the offensive starters and our first chance to get a look at Parker Devontae Parker came out of Louisville with a guy who was known as a mature receiver runs routes really well but the best part of his game he'll jump over you at the end of a route and go get the football Second down, here's Tannehill. Over the middle, it's Amendola. And he fumbled it. It's on the ground. That's picked up by the Titans. And his guys are going to take over at the 31-yard line. So a first quarter fumble in the rain. And this isn't supposed to let up. They've had flash flood warnings just west of here. So they better get used to this. And it's hard to do real early in the game because you're so amped up and you're trying to do so much. He's got to get used to it, though. You've got to focus in on the ball. Make sure you're taking care of it. That one cost him. this defense they're going to give them a lot of looks like we just saw there aren't they they certainly are they're a proud unit and they're going to ride the momentum of this crowd with them and that's why they got after them early so second and long and got to be careful not to fall out of field goal range Mariota now on second down and the hit jarred it loose it's incomplete. 
These two teams, Titans and Dolphins, met last year, week five. That was Jay Cutler versus Matt Castle, and it was the Dolphins getting a fourth quarter touchdown from Jarvis Landry, and they held on to win 16 to 10 in South Florida. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Third and long here for Mario. And some room to work. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. That one good for 12 yards. And that's going to make it fourth down. So on fourth down, here's the Tennessee field goal unit led by Ryan Sucka. From the right hash, it's a 41-yard attempt. And this one is going to just tuck into the bottom left corner as he gets it to go. And the Titans hit the scoreboard first. It's 3-0. Well, maybe a little bit of an anxious moment there as that ball got closer and closer, but it does curl in. Yeah, actually did a little bit of a slow dance there with the left upright, didn't it? But had just enough space, as you said, for it to curl in. Suck up now, set to kick it off, following the made field goal. Here comes Grant on the return. And not a bad return. Here he gets it out to the 25-yard line. So now here come the Dolphins. And last time they coughed it up, led to a field goal. They're fortunate that it only led to a field goal, but still, they're not happy about it. Could you sense the relief, though? When they only gave up the field yeah. goal, and they were able to trot back out on the field to start this drive. A little more pep in their step because they didn't cost their team a touchdown, but they know they've got to do it a lot better than they did on the last possession. The coach will just be relieved, though, if they recoup with a score here, right? I think coach would be ecstatic to see them pick themselves back up and now take it downfield, punching the end zone without turning it over. Tannehill and the Dolphins break the huddle. Come up first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Yep. First carry for Frank Gore back home here in Miami. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. Tennessee's starting defense here. And if you look at the linebacking core, Jayon Brown, someone you wanted to talk about. They always talk about speed and what it does to enhance an offense, a defense special teams. Jayon Brown has it in bucket falls. This guy can flat out fly. Many people thought he's more of a gimmick linebacker. Play on third down. He may very well be a starter next to Wesley Woodyard when the season begins. Rashawn Evans, the first-round pick out of Alabama, he's been hurt most of the preseason. Here's Tannehill now on second down. And that's going to be incomplete. Well, they're slinging it. And then there's one you got to put a timer on, huh? I mean, that one came in hot. That came in hot, but overthrown out of his reach and incomplete. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. Throwing on third down, Tannehill. Complete to his running back, Kenyon Drake. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. 17 yards for the Dolphins there as they've got themselves a first down. And this is why trying to cover the angle route is so difficult. Anyone playing the linebacker position, when they see a running back out of the backfield widen because he heads towards the flat first, oftentimes you widen too much and overcommit. He cuts up inside, and that's what we saw there. A nice pickup for a first down.
First down, it's gone. And he's up over midfield and down into Tennessee territory. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. The success there, Charles, coming on the outside of the field, the ground game. Curious to see if that continues as we progress. Yeah, we often talk about a variety in play calling, and usually between run and pass. But in this case, with strictly the run game, you can be creative there as well. Run it inside, run it outside, keep the defense off balance. To throw on second down is Tannehill. Got a man open. That's Devontae Parker complete. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. Tannehill with a hook up to Parker for the Dolphin first. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helped out a guy to turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. down Drake and he'll take this inside the 30 to about the 29 maybe the 28 yard line two yards on the carry there it'll be second down well they had that one snipped out excellent run blitz stopped that one for a short game what makes a good run blitz a good run blitz the ability to stay on task to follow up your assignment go to the gap you're supposed to cover and not be deterred by anything else Right back to Drake. <laughs> and inside the 20 before he's brought down. A Miami first down, that one going for a gain of 11. A big hole there. How about him handling the point of attack? Just positioning himself so that, that run could go right off of his backside and deep into the secondary. foray into the red zone for Miami. They have a first and ten at the 18. Now a handoff for Gore. And he's got this one down to the 10. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. Pretty effective run there, and now they can start to smell that end zone. Pound the rock. Make sure you use your old line to set the tone of dominance and physicality and pound the rock. On second down, it's Drake. And a short pickup there down to about the nine. Only a yard on the pickup, so a good situation on second and two. It's now third and one. Doubling this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella, he just ate that one alive, just stuffed it. In fact, before the game, he was talking to us, and he's like, hey, these pants make me look fat? And we said, nah, man, you're just a whole lot of guy. He is at well over 300 pounds. He's a big man. Tannehill going to throw on third and one. And he couldn't hang on. Almost an interception there defensively. Instead, it brings up fourth. You absolutely have to have this early on, right? Third and short, they elect to throw for it. And that's normal NFL football. They're gonna throw on third and short, but you gotta hit it, don't you? Yeah, in the first quarter, like you said, to set the tone, can't connect there. Jason Sanders now for the Miami field goal. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. Sanders' kick is good, and 
the Dolphins are going to tie the score at three. A dozen plays on that drive that ends with the field goal. Let's go ahead and break out some of the old chestnuts here, right, Parker? Keep the ball in front, rally to it, and make the tackle. Right? No big plays given up. No balls over your head. Bend, don't break. Hold on, hold on. Chestnuts? Ah, you like Come that on, one? what does that mean, break out the just because you're you break chestnuts? I, I'm not sure about that, but I'm just going why they said that. I have no idea. So we're right back where we started. All even as the kick's away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Back onto the field comes Tennessee's offense. Last week, week three of the preseason, only six points against Pittsburgh. And remember, this is an offense last year that ranked 19th in the league. So not at the bottom, but they certainly could improve. And they need to make a jump. Brand new coaching staff led by Mike Vrabel. Also a brand new offensive system. So quarterback Marcus Mariota having to adjust again, trying to find his rhythm as a passer. And of course, they need their offensive line to be intact so they can get the running game going as well. Mariota and the Titans break the huddle first and 10 at their 25-yard line. Now a carry for the shifty Deion Lewis. And he'll wind up with about six up past the 30 to the 31. All right, Brandon, I know we're in the early going here, but those kind of runs, they're going to open up a world of opportunities for this offense going forward. On the ground, this is Derek Henry. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. leverage really does a nice job of being lower than the offensive guys trying to block him and gets underneath them and goes up and down the line of scrimmage to make those types of plays and kept him to a short run play there they'll run it now out of the gun and not much there at all maybe a yard up to the 43 looks like they're establishing a pretty good pattern here because they've been very heavy in the running game on the last four plays. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. So far, four plays in this drive, all four on the ground. Dolphins bring on an extra defensive back on third down. From the gun, Mariota. He's caught on the sideline, but he's not going to have a first down. They say he was out of bounds, so a big call there. That brings up fourth. Well, you got a young quarterback. You know, Maybe that's just an example of a growing pain for him. I think you're right about that because when the game starts to move fast and it moves quickly on him, a lot of times they fall back on what they know best, their arm. He's, he's slinging it on this one. Had a wide-open target but didn't have the proper footwork to increase his accuracy. On his Kern, the punter, to send this one away. Taking it about the 16. It'll be a 40-yard punt, eight on the return, and it'll be Dolphin football. Then the Dolphins getting set to go here. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Tannehill and the Dolphins break the huddle. Come up first and 10 at their own 24. Hey, that's winning. 
Cut. They'll start on the ground with Gore. And he'll get this one up to the 26. Derek Morgan in on the stop. Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again. Go play action and hit them over the top. seven-yard line. The tackle is made by Adoree Jackson. Sometimes your philosophies get challenged at times you don't want them to. They did try to stick to the running game on the first two plays. Didn't amount to much. And now facing a third and long at the outset of this drive. A nickel set shown by the Titans on third down. They can pass. Out of the gun, Tannehill. And he's going to be great. so quickly, Charles. What could the offense have done to adjust and account for that? But what you're hoping is that you figure out and you see and get a clue that maybe there's going to be some pressure coming at you and you change the blocking schemes. Maybe you go to max protection. The biggest one is maybe you bring your running back in to try and keep you clean. But in that case, that didn't happen. Zero accountability and a sack resulted. On fourth down, Matt Hawk to punt it away. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. With it is Jackson. They'll call that a punt of 59 yards. Tough to do better than that. And it'll be Titan football. And here comes Tennessee as they get sent to take the field. The last couple of drives have ended in punts. Maybe the crowd minds that, but you're a defensive guy. You're okay with a couple of punt drives. Listen, I'm the guy that loves a 0-0 pitch game. All right, in baseball, I can handle that going into the seventh inning. I think the crowd, though, they want to see a little bit more excitement. Let's see if someone can break something free on offense and get going. Offense at a premium the last two drives. Mariota and the Titans break the huddle first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. On first and 10, here's Mariota. Throwing over the middle incomplete. One of his main targets, Delaney Walker, the intended receiver. And now it's second down. I know coaches tell us all the time that having a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback. But when you're trying to throw inside routes and you need to put some heat on it, it helps have the big gun. In this case, just a little bit too much. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Now some movement before the snap. And we'll hear from our referee for the first time Touchdown. this afternoon. Offense. And that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. Still second down. So after the penalty, heading in the wrong direction, second and 15. Second down, Mariota. That's complete to Taylor Taylor. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. They call it a gain of 19, and it moves the chains. He missed on his first three passes, was 0 for 3. Now gets a connection. Maybe that'll get him going. Yeah, it wasn't a time for panic, but there was some concern because once you start in a certain pattern, you wonder, can you get out of it? And that flips the other way, too, when you're throwing it really well. In this case, now he's got his first completion. They think he might be off to the races. A first down carry for Henry. And he's going to be brought down on what will be the final play of this first quarter. So a field goal apiece, that's all we have here in this first quarter. It's a tight game here early, and we'll be back to South Florida after this.
The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. With the former volunteer Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. It's the Titans with the football here to begin quarter number two. They're looking at a second and short yardage to start things out. the quarterback saw him and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. Second and ten after the incompletion on first down. On second down, Mariota again. And he hits the running back, Deion Lewis. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. Now a good pickup. They get eight, but it's third down now. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware a ball may come your way. So third and two, this quite possibly four down territory, though, if they're stopped. They'll try to run for the first with Henry. No gain there on the play, and that's going to leave them with a fourth down. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. So now on comes the field goal unit, and wow, this is no ordinary try here. This will be from 56 yards out. Oh, they get to the football. It's blocked. Now it's scooped up, and this is a live football. Those really long field goals, when they are made, they are things of beauty, but there is a danger to getting them started, isn't there? Yeah, with that low drive, you've got to really keep it low to the ground, don't you, to get that distance. Yeah, hard to just pop it up in the air, because otherwise it's not going to get there. So he's got to drive it low in order to have the distance, and that usually puts it in jeopardy, gives him a chance to block it, and everyone knows it on the other side. That's when you get your best jumpers on the other side of the field to try and get up and get it. So now a chance for points in the opposite direction after the blocked field goal. Drake off the give from Tannehill. And he'll get this into enemy territory, but not by much as he's down to the 48. Tackle made by Brian Arakpo. That didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just started in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of see ball, get ball. into an ill-advised throw into their zone. Well, we know he has confidence. He'll throw it any place, any time, anywhere. That time it fell incomplete. The Dolphins on third down. Just one for three thus far. This is third and eight. Hey, eight is yours. Eight is yours. Eight, hot, hot. A 
shotgun snap for Tannehill. Out to the flat. That's complete to his running back. And that play goes nowhere. Taken down, losing yardage at the 50, right at midfield. He lost two, and it brings up fourth. Well, they try to swing it out left into the flat. Complete, but really nice open field tackling. And they played that one like a great boxer. They were on their toes on that one. They weren't back on their heels reacting to the play. No, they saw it, came right for it, and made a nice tackle for lost yardage. Here's Matt Hawk now. He'll boot it away from about his 35. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. Here's the Titan offense now as they make their way back onto the field. Titans break the huddle first and 10 at their own 19-yard line. A first down throw for Mariota. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. And he'll go down just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. It's a gain of five, and it'll be a second down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Now a second down throw for Mariota. Over the middle, that's caught by Taylor. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. With a quick slant, good for eight and a first. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. Tennessee and a first down. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. devastating the Houston area and other areas there in Southeast Texas. One year later, though, J.J. Watt's foundation announced it had raised and given $41.6 million in the last calendar year. That's phenomenal. And he was the NFL Man of the Year last season, and rightly so for what he did. And if I'm not incorrect, his goal when he started this to help all the people was $200,000. 41.6 million minus 200,000. That, that's a pretty good margin there. That's a heck of a margin. Congratulations to J.J. Watt, his foundation, and to everyone who contributed to help out the people in Houston. The Titans on third down. 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This is third and 10. Shotgun, it's Mariota. And he's got a man, Corey Davis. 
Davis. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. His first catch, and it's a pretty big one. They get the conversion on third down. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down. So now first and 10 as they've crossed into Miami territory at the 38. First down, Mariota. And pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Seems like this defense, especially the secondary, has really been contesting about every throw in this first half. Remind me of a good half-court defensive basketball team. Every time a pass is thrown, they're right there in good, the good defensive position, able to affect the play. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Now we've got movement up front. I think this is going to be on the Titans. False start, offense. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. Still second down. So after the penalty, heading in the wrong direction, second and 15. After the penalty, it's Henry. And he'll be brought down at about the 42. He'll get two yards back, but it's going to leave him with a long third and 13. Brandon, we talk all the time about those hybrid players, guys who could do more than one thing. And I think if you're playing strong safety in the NFL today, you are a true hybrid. Part linebacker, part cover guy. And coming up, sticking his nose in the mess there and making a nice play defensively. Mariota from the gun on third down. Caught right side, it's Lewis. It's a gain of seven, and that's going to bring up the fourth down. And at his size, he's a smaller back. You can get him to football. He can kind of get lost, make someone miss. It's good for him. Yeah, it's great for him. I like what you said there. Sometimes he gets lost in the traffic a little bit. But get him out in the open field into some space. That plays to his strengths the best and keeps him out of it where all the big boys are, you know, make him make someone miss in the open field. And that one's not going to get there. Not enough juice and ambitious effort. But it's well short. And this game will remain tied here in quarter number two. So without making excuses, you have to figure that this rain has had an impact now on both of his missed field goals. It's one of those situations really difficult to practice for and tough to prepare yourself against. It's just a whole different animal kicking in the rain. And we've really seen him struggle. The Dolphins offense now heads back on the field. They were forced to punt last time. And I doubt sincerely that they'll have to punt here because they're gifted with terrific field position. I don't even want to think about the idea that they would end up punting starting with this type of field position. Neither do they. Great starting spot, great opportunity to run your full playbook. If they want to take a shot here, they can go ahead and do it. And because they couldn't hit the long field goal, they are set up nicely offensively at the 41, first and 10. Now a play fake here on first down. And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory. That one good for 13 at a Dolphin first down. There are so many things to watch for when you play defense. And reading your keys, you always hear about that, and having your eyes in the right place. Sometimes your eyes can fool you. How about that play action there that sprang the big guy, didn't it? Able to dump it over the top to him.
Now that's one they hate. It's Both first got to come all the way back. So that's an explosive play, a really explosive play that gets wiped out, and they have to start over after the penalty. So following the hold, they're in a bit of a hole here with a first and 20. Draw play. Tannehill gives to Drake. And he got blown up. Losing yardage on the play back at the 44. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Uh, it's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that. Got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. They stay on the ground with Drake. And he's up over midfield and down into Tennessee territory. A nice job of just sticking the helmet down nine yards on the play, but still third and 12 now. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. The Dolphins on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This is third down and 12. Now Tannehill. Under pressure, he's going to go down. Tannehill sacked. Wesley Woodyard coming in to drop him for a loss of eight. And it'll be fourth down. And there they bring pressure from the inside and they get home. Yeah, hard to block everyone, isn't it? And on this play, <laughs> someone did not get blocked. He's the one who got home. Here's Matt Hawk now as he's on to punt for Miami. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Calls for the fair catch, makes the fair catch just inside the 15-yard line. 36 yards on the punt with no return. And possession will switch hands first and 10. The Titans offense now, they work their way back onto the field. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, this time? Yeah, get a little time? closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. Working out of the gun, Mariota. Oh, that was dangerous. Threw it into coverage, almost picked. But instead, they'll keep it on second down. As we inch closer to the regular season, I'm just peering down at some of the preseason records. Right now, Ravens 4-0, Bengals, Panthers, Cardinals, all 3-0. I guess my question is, what stock do you put in these preseason records? You know, the easy answer is nothing, because <laughs> the preseason doesn't really matter. But some organizations do put more stock in it than others. Some of them want to win every preseason game. Others don't worry about that at all. Intel has told me that only one team has won the Super Bowl after going 0-4 in the preseason. And that was in a... Yeah, the double coverage, and it's intercepted. Cordray Tinker showed with the pick. And they'll start with great field position at the 41-yard line. And Brandon, the passing game for both of these teams is going to be affected as the game goes along. It's not looking like the rain's going to let up anytime soon. So that might mean a few more wobbly passes and wide receiver slips. And this one winds up getting intercepted.
Lions offense now working their way back onto the field. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trade expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. Tannehill hands to Dre. Able to push forward for about four down to the 37. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. Second down, here's Tannehill. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. He was trying to get it to Frank Gore there. And that takes us from second to third down. It's been my observation, there's been a nice variety of play calling defensively. You and I often talk about an offense's ability to keep a defense off balance with what they're doing. I think the converse has been true in this game. Yeah, I think you're right. They seem to have gone off tendency quite a bit, but only the second quarter, a lot of time to change things. Throwing on third down, Tannehill. And that is incomplete. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here, but that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open. And this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. Here's Matt Hawk now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And they won't try and pooch it. It's a fake. And he's going to let it go deep. And this is incomplete. A huge gamble, and it does not pay off. They fake the punt. It doesn't work out. The Titan offense now working their way back onto the field. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense mm -hmm. at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and 10. <laughs> Try to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. And he'll toss this one incomplete. Seeing no options, he throws it away. This defense has been very disruptive early on as they force another one to go awry. Seems to be the front and the back end. Pass rush, they've been able to get home. And they're taking the ball away in coverage as well. I love how you put it together. The front and back working in sync. Only way to play good defense. Throwing again. Mariota on second and ten. Throwing the out route. Complete. That's Davis. And to the 42-yard line here and brought down there. That catch good for five. It's third down. But it appears that they read man defense and went to the out route. And what you have to do on that one is the receiver's got to make sure he works a defender towards the middle of the field to give himself space to cut to the outside and have that ball delivered with good timing. And they got it done. Two minutes to play in a tightly contested first half. We'll come back to Miami after this. We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll take you to Orlando and Jonathan Coachman. Coach will have highlights and analysis of this first half, one that's featured no touchdowns as of yet on either side. So his job's a little bit easier for this halftime. Need to give the, need to give the coach some highlights here. Yes, we do. The Titans on third down. Just one for five to this point. This will be third and five. To throw is Mariota. And this is going to be incomplete. 
We always talk about receivers. If the ball hits your hand, you're supposed to haul it in, but it is hard to adjust to a pass throwing a little bit behind you. That one was all the momentum going forward. Couldn't contort his body back to grab it. Here's Brett Kern now as he'll kick it away for the second time. Is much too long. That's into the end zone for a touchback. And out come the Dolphins now. Start the drive with Drake. And the ball is knocked out. It's picked up by the Titans. And his guys will take over at the 30-yard line. And maybe that one caused by the weather. Of course, the rain coming down. Charles, can you maybe, when you're carrying that football, grip it too tight in the rain? I think that you can. And it's such a delicate balance, too, because when you grip it so tight, sometimes it'll slip out from your body. You squeeze it too hard, and it'll pop out on its own. I've actually had running backs talk to me about that, that when they've tried too hard, even in perfect conditions, the ball gets away from them. They've got to find that good balance, carrying it firmly, yet at the same time under control. Kiko Alonso. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down. A very solid gain on that play. Again, it's Lewis. And he's going to take this one down to about the 23-yard line. It'll be a pickup of a couple, and it leaves them with a third and three. Well, so many times we look at a short run, and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blows. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. So the offense took the timeout. Looks like they're ready to go as we get set to resume the action. The Titans on third down. They've had their troubles. Just one for six. This time it's third and three. Here's Mariota. And an incomplete pass. That'll stop the clock here with just under a minute to play in half number one. Certainly looked like they were getting ready to convert there on third down, but what an effort to get his hand on that one. Knock it away and brings up a fourth down decision. Here's Ryan Suckup for the Titan field goal. And remember, he had one blocked earlier. And Suckup will put this one right through. And they will take the lead here in this battle of field goals. It's six to three. So this time, the protection holds up for him just fine, and he's able to bang it through. I think their special teams coach got the point across. He gave him a pretty good earful after the block earlier. This time, there's no penetration, so they're able to pick up three.
Suck up now, set to kick it off, following the main field goal. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Out comes the Dolphin offense now as they get set to take over here. And what do you think goes on here in this situation? If you got the football, you're trailing, you're back in your own territory with just a little time. Do you try something? You're thinking about jump-starting your team, right? You just mentioned they're down. They're trying to get back into the game. But you've got to figure if something goes wrong, you may have put yourself in a spot where you may not be able to come back in the second half. Managing risk, this is a big decision here. Drake will start the drive on the ground. And able to stay on his feet past the 30 to about the 33-yard line. And before this second down play, we'll get a whistle, a signal, and a timeout. As the clock shows 50 seconds to play here in half number one. The throw on second down is Tannehill. Over the middle, it's Amendola. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here. As the clock will stop with 45 seconds to go in the first half. And welcome back, the offensive unit. They took the timeout. And now they get set to line up as we resume action. Safety Kevin Byer there on the coverage for Tennessee. It's always a battle. Who's going to win on first down? The offense or the defense? Let's face it, if you've got the ball, four yards or more on first down is what you're aiming for. They tried to throw for it there. Nice effort to knock that one away and bring up second down. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. to the air, Tannehill on second down. And throw right side complete to Parker. And now the ball's out, fumble near midfield. They'll get to the line here, but remember it's also review. third down. After review of the play, the ruling on the field is reversed. This challenge was initiated by the guys in New York taking a look at the play. Less than two minutes to go. Yeah, I'm sure the coach wanted to challenge it, so he's probably going to send the New York office a holiday card. Well, the Dolphins moving with a sense of urgency here. From the 50, it's Tannehill. And that's incomplete. Clock stops with 10 seconds left. Here's Matt Hawk now. On, we think, to punt, though he's faked it earlier, but he was unsuccessful.
time running down. They go down to a knee. So if you like field goals, this is your game. 6-3, three, three field goals at the break. As we go up to Orlando now and hand it over to Jonathan Coachman with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome in, everyone, to an abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. This one's been as good as advertised. Just a field goal separating these two teams as they've already made their way back out of the locker room. So to bring you the story of the second half, let's get you right back out to Brandon God. Thank you, sir. A field goal separates these two teams as we come back for this second half. Forecast calling for more of the same. The rain set to continue as we are underway in the half. Adore Jackson on the return. And he nearly broke that for more, but as it is, they'll start this drive at about the 37-yard line. The Titans offense now, they get ready to do battle again here. They have the lead, now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers, or counters as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half, and they've had ability to see what you've done. They're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt. <laughs> show them one thing, hit them with something else. They go play action here on first down. And this one is incomplete. The intended receiver, Taewon Taylor. And that'll bring up second down. We've seen these defenses make enough opportunistic plays to keep this one low scoring. Flying around, making plays on the ball. And we see yet another errant throw as a result. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. Second down, here's Henry. And he's across the 43, extra yards to the 43. And they get six here after the incompletion, and it'll leave them with a third and four. Kid had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one? Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. The Titans on third down. It's been a problem, just one for seven thus far. This is third and four. From the gun, Mariota. Open man is Taylor. He's got it. And he gets it down to the 48. Enough for the first. Nine yards on the pick up there, and it keeps the drive alive. Now, that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage, and that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, a tight, a sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area, so you may curl a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. Play fake to Henry. Now Mariota. Incomplete to the tight end walker, right side. Just a yard on the catch there. It'll be second and nine. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. They only got a yard out of that last completion, and that makes this second and nine. Mariota now on second down. That is incomplete. Xavier Howard with a good coverage that time as he was there and knocked it away. But sometimes you just have to take things into your own hands, don't you? I mean, the offense is really struggling in this game. 
They're the ones keeping things going. They have to continue to play at that level. The Titans on third down. They've struggled to the tune of two for eight so far. This is third and nine. Mariota again. And he hits his man, Matthews. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. A Tennessee first down. That one, Mariota to Matthews. Mariota now. Five straight completions here in this second half. First and ten. On first and ten, here's Mariota. And Walker with it over the middle. And he'll be brought down at the 27-yard line. A gain of six there on first. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. To the air again, Mariota. He's got Lewis. And he'll go down here right around the 23-yard line. It's a four-yard pickup, and they'll be faced with a third and in inches. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. The offense on third down tonight, they've converted a third of their opportunities, three for nine. They're looking at third in the nose of the football. They'll run it now out of the gun. And down inside the 15 he goes. That's a first down pickup for Tennessee on a gain of 10. It's a big place in the passing game on this drive. And here's one out of the running game. So the passing game, loosening things up. Now there's room to roam. Took till the second half, but finally a red zone opportunity here. They have a first and 10 at the 13-yard line. They keep it on the ground. This time it's Henry. And he'll be taken down here at about the 11. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held him to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. Again, it's Henry. And a nice pick up there as he'll take it from the 10 down to the five-yard line. I think we can safely say that those types of plays are the backbone of this offense. We know not every run's going to be a big hitter, but you know they'll take that type of result on each and every attempt. The Titans on third down. They're right at about the league average, 40%, 4 for 10. Here it's third and two. This will be caught at about the five. The completion there winds up a wash, and it'll bring up fourth down. So they go pass on third and two. They complete it, but no gain. Should they have tried to run it? I thought that running the ball in that situation is what they would have done because at worst-case scenario, you may bring up a fourth down decision for your team. Instead, now they're not close to the first down.
here's Ryan Suckup for the Titan field goal. And remember, he had one blocked earlier. And Suckup will put this one right through. And the lead will increase to six now. It's nine to three. So that one is his third of the game. Now, if you're wondering, that's only halfway to his career high as he once had six oh, field oh, goals. Brandon, but what, six? Let's hope we don't get that again, <laughs> please. Okay, can, can we see a few touchdowns here and there? That'd be nice. Suckup now set to kick it off following the main field goal. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. So here are the Dolphins now. They get ready for their first possession of the second half. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Tannehill and the Dolphins break the huddle. Come up first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. On first and 10, Tannehill, and nearly picked off there, and it would have been a great time for their first pick. Instead, it's second down. Oh, man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum, big play, right in his hands, unable to come down with it. And a sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense if that fell harmlessly to the ground. And incomplete leads to second and 10 from the 25. Second and 10, Tannehill once more. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And they're able to get this one across the 35. A Dolphin first down as Tannehill is on target to the former Patriot, Danny Amendola. That was a nicely run slant route. He's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and get the quarterback a really nice target. Tannehill now 9 of 17 through the air. On the handoff, it's Gore. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. That one good for 10 yards. And that'll make it second and a foot or so. Now that was an excellent run. And when you see that happen, that's when you're seeing guys doing their job and then some people doing a little bit more. Offensive linemen and tight ends, they're expected to block. But the wide receivers, all they want to do is catch passes. So when they block on a big-time running play and create extra space, you've got to hit the jackpot there. Here's Tannehill now on second down. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. It'll be a pickup of four, good enough to earn him yet another first down. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. So operating from Tennessee territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 48-yard line. Now a play fake here on first down. That's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. A gain of six there on first. And there's a nice catch by Mike Gesicki, the rookie out of Penn State. And Barner, you saw him when you were covering Big Ten football. He didn't block very many people, but that's not what they asked him to do. They asked him to go downfield and catch the balls we just saw there. Yeah, absolutely right, and he can do it with the best of them. Yeah, and how about him in his high school video? Did you ever see any of that with him dunking basketballs and spiking volleyballs? His athletic ability is off the charts. Tannehill. And the Titan defense steps up here, and down he goes. 
Wesley Woodyard in there to pick up his second sack now of the afternoon. We are seeing two really confident defenses imposing their will on these offenses in this game. Yeah, absolutely, going toe for toe. Just curious if one of these offenses can wake up a little bit. Is there any way they can find something that can pop, something big to knock them back on their heels? So after the sack of Tannehill, the Dolphins come up here on a third and long. They'll fake the handoff. Now Tannehill. Got a man. It's Amendola. And he's going to get this one down right to the edge of the red zone. The chalk of a 20. And a big third down conversion with a gain of 28. Tannehill now five straight completions here in this second half. First and ten. From the red zone now, Tannehill. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. The 30. On second down, here's Tannehill. Throw left side complete. It's Gray. And they'll go backwards here, losing yardage to the 14. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that'll make it third down. If you're a selfish player and you're throwing the ball, you're cool with the completion. Maybe not so cool with the yardage loss, though, huh? Yeah, you went, you went backwards on the yardage. Hey, it kind of works like a sack for the defense there. Yeah, it's a really big play for them, right? Able to figure it out, sniff it out, and finish it off. The Dolphins on third down. They've struggled to the tune of two for eight so far. This is third and four. To the air again, Tannehill. They'll set up the screen to Dre. And he's able to pick up the first before he's brought down inside the five at the four. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Well, they've had a great, impressive drive going here, and that pickup ensures the drive continues. And not only do you continue the drive, which is demoralizing for the guys on the defense side of the ball right now, but you make your own defense happy. They're able to get a little more rest over on the sidelines while this one continues downfield. Might we see our first touchdown of the game? Here's first and goal. On first and goal, Drake. And not a whole lot there. He does get a couple, taking it from the five down to the three. Well, it's been the air game that's taken them down on this drive before they finally turned around and handed it off on the last play. And now they're looking for the big boys to get him in the end zone. Couldn't do it there. It'll be interesting to see. Offensive lines had to pass block a lot on this drive. Will they be able to revert and fire out and create some space in the run game? From the gun, here's Tannehill. He's got it. Touchdown, Dolphins. Marquise Gray from three yards out. And the Dolphins have tied it. Now they can take the lead with the extra point. Sometimes those tight ends are a mismatch. They found the mismatch there. And that's exactly why you want to drop those types of plays, because coverage is just going to go to the natural guys, the guys that make the big plays on the outside. But if you work your tight end into it, that's a tough one for a defense to handle. Tough. They couldn't handle it. It worked out for six. A good hold in these 
these wet conditions, the point after is up and good, and that will put them on top here in the third. So that drive, 12 plays in length, and it winds up in six points for the Dolphins. Sanders now to kick this one away. Jackson now to return. And he breaks it all the way out to the 38-yard line. Great return. Out come the Titans now. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just, I, I like the way we do, you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. Good starting field position for them here as they come up first and ten. They'll start things on first down with Deion Lewis. And this has been a familiar sight all afternoon as they stop him behind the line. I know when I was a kid, I always got real excited when I saw those lateral-type runs. But the best backs that made it happen, they put a foot in the ground and just go. That didn't happen there. That play got swallowed up. went all the way up to about the 46-yard line. They get nine yards back on the run there, and they're left with a much more makeable third and two. On a second and long, it's really nice to see an offense that has enough confidence to run the football in that situation. I think that goes back to their practice and game planning. They've seen things that they've seen on tape and in previous games that led them to believe that even in a long-distance situation, they can still run the football and gain enough yardage to put themselves in a good spot on third down. Back now in Miami. And we've got a dandy here. One-point game as we begin the fourth. to dry a little bit there on the high throw. Luckily, fell incomplete. On second down, Mariota again. Pressure, he's going to be taken down. They sack him back right around the 44. Robert Quinn in there to get him. His second sack now of the afternoon. 
And we say it all the time, have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you're getting three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. Mariota will need a big play after the sack as the Titans come up third and long. Working out of the gun, Mariota, and he's going to go down again. Kiko Alonso in there to drop him, and back-to-back -back sacks now bring up fourth and long. Well, that play was the very definition of fast, quick, and in a hurry. Suddenly, he was there. In a blink of an eye, that happened fast and a big sack. Here's Brett Kern now, as he's on to punt for Tennessee. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. And they call it 38 yards on the punt, no return. And the Dolphins' drive will start deep in their own territory with a first and 10. Out comes the Miami offensive unit now. They get set to take over. Last time they were out here, they had the benefit of good field position, led to a touchdown. This time, they're going to have to work for it. They are, but with that last drive that culminated in a touchdown, I think they carry that confidence into this one. It doesn't matter where you start with the football now. They have to feel great about their opportunity. Tannehill and the Dolphins break the huddle, come up first and 10 at their own 19-yard line. On first down, it's Tannehill. On the right side, open is Gusecki. Got some room at the 30. Finally taken down at the 32-yard line. Given 12 yards there, the Dolphins have a first down. I got the sense that the defense created a little momentum for them there, didn't they? Did their job, forced the punt. Now, nice start to the drive. Offense has to do their part. Yeah, they certainly do, but what a great start for them. They've got to go thank the guys on D. Try and choose some clock with Gore. And he'll get this up only to about the 33. Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. Offensively with the lead, you want to run the ball, keep the clock going. But you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too, right? So how do you do that and not come back on your heels? Now think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this, where they describe the scenario tell you what they're looking for and make sure that they're still attacking yet at the same time not going so fast as to leave too much time on the clock and he'll get this only up to about the 35 the cornerback it's logan ryan who brings him down well with the fumble he had earlier we, we know how key keeping the football is here that fumble earlier probably at the forefront of his mind just hold on to this thing it's also at the forefront of the mind of the guys who are trying to get the ball from him and since they've seen him drop it on the ground before they're doing everything possible to have them do it again. They need that turnover. That's Tannehill. And that is incomplete. Well, too much oomph, too much mustard there on that pass. They really turned it loose, didn't they? Really cut loose with that one. Sharp, strong. Didn't lead to a completion, though. Made it very difficult. Here's Matt Hawk now as he's on for the fifth time here today. Forty-four on his first punt, and this is a good kick as well. And this one hits at the three and then bounds into the end zone for a touchback. And the Titans getting set to go. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now with a game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. 
Mariota and the Titans break the huddle first and 10 at the 20. First down, Mariota. To the right side, complete to Taylor. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. An 11-yard pickup for the Titans and a first down. Boy, the evolution of the game and how these guys on plays like that can get out of the pocket, keep plays alive. It just makes things so much harder for defenses. It really does, and we're talking about an era in the game where the quarterbacks are the most athletically gifted that we've seen in a bunch. I mean, when you talk about collectively, it's unbelievable. So their ability to move is practiced now. It's not necessarily, oh, he just took off and you guys figure it out. When he takes off, everyone knows where to go now. They know how to run routes, change things, make themselves presentable for the quarterback. That's a lot of time that they put in on it. It's not just your static one, two, three. This is where the ball goes anymore. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You're tackling almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. Now a second down throw for Mariota. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back. Complete. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. An 11-yard pickup for the Titans and a first down. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end. But running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. of three on that first down pass play. Now second and 13. They'll throw again. Mariota escaping the pressure right. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. It's just a gain of a couple there on the scramble. And now it's third down. so good no matter what you're doing on offense you just can't shake anyone free they try their best to find someone open but they took away every passing alley every angle and shut the play down here's Brett Kern now as he's on to punt for Tennessee fair catch called for right around the 11 yard line a 40-yard punt, no return, and the offense will come back out deep in their own territory. Here's Ryan Tannehill and the Dolphin offense back out onto the field. And those numbers, they kind of tell the story of his game so far. Started off not so hot now, he's really heated up. And remember, he signed up for duty as the guy who leads the team, right? The field general, the signal caller. So when things go rocky early, he can't just exit out and ask someone else to pick things up. He's got to do it himself, and that's what he's done here in this game. So the offense, a little antsy, the flag comes out. 
And a five-yard penalty. False start. Offense. Maybe anticipating a blitz, and they jumped. Yeah, and if we saw it, you know that they saw it. The bad guys might have been coming on Still that first play. Down. Had to pick them up, and they jumped. Last year, the Dolphins were the second most penalized team in the NFL, nearly nine a game, and now they've got first and 15. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's up past the 10 to about the 12. It's a five-yard pickup, so essentially they get the penalty yardage back, and it's back to second and 10. Well, Brandon Pace comes into play now because they've got the advantage. They've got the football, but they've got to be very careful about what speed they're going to play. You know, my, my music teacher back at New Paltz, Mrs. Bythema Bagley, used to say, don't go prestissimo when you really want to go Largo. And what she meant by that is don't go too fast when you really want to go with a nice, slow, deliberate pace. I am speechless. I am without speech. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. Okay, I'm not quite sure how to judge that one. Maybe he didn't have enough legs underneath him. Mechanics might have been off. Maybe some fatigue. That one came up short. Yeah, fourth quarter. Maybe you do start to watch. Is the arm there? The leg's still there. This has been a tough game. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. The pressure drops off as they'll look to throw. Looking deep now for Amendola. And look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. Picked off by the safety, Kenny Vaccaro. And he will take it across midfield and down to the 45. Amendola, he was the intended target. A critical error there in a tight game of the fourth. All you talk about is taking care of the football, and especially with a lead here in the fourth quarter. Turning it over, now the door is open for the opposition. Just in general, when you're passing in the fourth quarter with a lead, no matter at what point, you got to be super careful. Got to be careful, and sometimes you can be so careful that you end up running yourself into an error. And here comes Tennessee as they get sent to take the field and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys, win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. Following the interception here, Mariota. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out, incomplete. Now, he's been a busy man out of the backfield. They've looked his way quite a bit so far in this game. Nice job there defensively, though, adjusting, because a couple of his earlier catches, he was wide open. Not that time. You mentioned the key word, adjustment. A better cover man on him now in space. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Throwing again, Mariota on second and ten. And his throw here is incomplete. Well, not to get too overcritical there because he knows what he's doing, but his shoulders look a little off kilter there when he threw that. I don't think you're being overly critical there. You're just analyzing it, and he gets those shoulders right. That pass will go from incomplete to complete. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. Play action to Henry. Here's Mariota. And that will be incomplete as well. All right, that one fell incomplete there, but the best quarterbacks, they'll miss on 40% of their throws somewhere in that neighborhood, similar to a great hitter in baseball who's going to fail seven out of ten times and still have a great year. In this case, you want perfection, but way better that it hits the ground instead of going to an opposite color jersey. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. The Dolphins offense now ready to go back out onto the field.
Tannehill and the Dolphins break the huddle. Come up first and 10 at the 33-yard line. Now a handoff for Drake. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll bring up a second in just about a few inches here. Brian, I remember a coaching friend of mine used to tell his running backs before games, make sure you run and jog with your offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking with those big behemoths starting to create space for you up front. He did a pretty good job of just following those guys through there for a nice explosive run. this time. And just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. Well, it is our business to analyze what we saw out there on that play. I saw a defense staying in base, not taking a chance, not blitzing in a situation where they absolutely need the football back. That's either a case of overthinking it or not thinking it through. If you do blitz, do you have to be careful about where you're coming from, or are you just coming from all angles? You have to be careful about where you're coming from, obviously, but at this stage, you have to take a few chances as well. Now a first down throw, Tannehill. And over the middle, this is Parker. And he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. A good pick up there of 20 yards. This is something you got to be wary of defensively. I mean, just because they're in the mode of trying to burn some clock doesn't mean they won't pass it. They got good yardage out of that one. Yeah, and really, when you're looking at it, now they've got a fresh set of downs. Look for second down. If they want to take another shot and try to loosen things up, that'd be the time to do it. So operating from Tennessee territory now. Here's first and 10 down at the 33. Now Drake. And that play is blown up. Losing yardage back at the 35. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football. But that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter... You're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result. Negative yardage. Hey, hey, hey. Hey. They'll run it now out of the gun. And a short game down to about the 33. Wesley Woodyard there on the tackle. Well, the objective there, I mean, yes, the positive gain, that's nice, but work some clock. Yeah, you're exactly right, but the problem for them is still within a possession, so they can't just sit on it running the ball. They'll have to find a way to throw it effectively as well. Possibly a turning point. Big play coming. This is third and long. Time for a break. We'll come back, see what transpires after this. So the Dolphins have it as we welcome you back in. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. The Dolphins on third down. They've had a lot of chances, but not much success, converting only three times. This is third and ten. They'll run with Drake. And that play went nowhere. Losing yardage. It'll be back at the 36. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. From the right hash, this from 53. He's got the leg, but it's 
that's no good. He missed it right, and this score will stay right where it is. So they'll come away with nothing here. A disappointing result even on a day like this. And as a kicker in the rain, you've got to slow things down a little bit. Give your holder an extra half second to make sure everything's secure. And here, he might have rushed this one a little, and it winds up no good. Marcus Mariota getting ready to go again here on offense. It's a pretty simple formula, Charles. A field goal, all you need, that wins you the game. And the most confident guys going out on the field to direct their teams, they probably already talked to their kicker before they went out and let him know, don't worry, you've got a chance to be a hero in this one. I'll set you up, you just knock it through the post. His plan, get the team downfield and get them into position. They've gone over it many times in practice. That's how he's going to approach it. And now on the sideline, everyone stay away from the kicker. <laughs> He'll start off with a give to Lewis. And he'll push his way up to about the 44 here. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Titans moving quickly here. They're in the hurry up. They'll look to throw. Throw taken in by Taylor left side. And he's brought down. 17 yards on that play for the Titans. Clock running here under 90 seconds to go. Back to throw. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. He was looking to find some space for Deion Lewis there. And it's second down. So he's unable to complete it there, and just not the game that you would expect from him. He's been off the mark, really, start to finish. Yeah, it makes you wonder what exactly is going on. Is he a little bit dinged up here? Or is it just off just by a bit? Maybe he can get it back in this situation. He'll need to. He'll look to throw. Right side, it's Lewis. And now maybe they want some extra time to talk about this third and long play as we'll get a timeout. As they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. And we're back. The offense had a chance to talk things over. We'll see what they come up with here on this next play. They wound up getting nothing out of that second down completion. So now here's third and ten. Back to throw. He dumps it off for Henry. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Now the Dolphins are going to halt the action here. It's a timeout. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action. scrimmage now the Dolphins are going to take another time out here that'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play and now following that time out the defense back out onto the field timeout so as they talk things over we'll step aside so the defense had a chance to catch their breath and now they're back out and ready
Seventh play of the drive, fourth coming on third and eight. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And down inside the 15 he goes. First down, Titans gain of 12. First down now, but the clock continues to move. And they get up on it quickly and spike it with just a little over 50 seconds to go. Six on the carry, and that'll get him to third and four. He's back to throw. And this is caught. Touchdown. And they've taken the lead here in the final minute. Wow. I know it's a never-say-never never situation, but to me, that looks like that's the one that's going to finish him off. The score that puts him in front here late, but now you got to rally your kick team, don't you, and say the last thing we need is a big return. And what happens is guys get overeager, get out of their lane because they're so excited they want to make the last tackle. <laughs> you mess up, could come back at you a long way. And a pause in the action because the booth, they see something that they want to take another peek at to find out if this was a touchdown or not. Titan offense, they're going to line up to go for two. Now Mariota. And this is going to be incomplete. Protection was great. He had time to set up a campsite. But in the secondary, though, they were ready. And I think that in most places on the field, if you have that much time to throw the ball, someone's going to shake free and you'll find an open receiver. But condensed near the goal line on a two-point conversion, all that exit, you know, there's not any extra field. So it kind of closes in on them, and that allows you to cover a little bit better. Now here's Suckup out to kick it away. This is fielded at the chalk of the 10. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30 to the 33-yard line. Here comes Ryan Tannehill now leading his offense back out there. This is something we've seen many times over the course of his career. Can he pull off another fourth-quarter comeback? And it's very strange, isn't it? Because when it's a player of this magnitude, even though the guys on defense have the lead and are sitting in the best spot, they're maybe the most nervous people in the stadium because they've seen this happen to too many people before, too many teams. They've got to find a way to shut him down. Here we go again for the grizzled vet. Now it's Tannehill. Over the middle, it's Amandale. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. The Miami first down, that one going for a gain of 11. And now the spike comes with 15 seconds on the clock. And that one is incomplete. It stops the clock now with 15 seconds remaining. Ready, Hunt. Ready. Ready, Hunt. 
Tannehill. He's going to let it fly. But he can't corral it. That would have wrapped it up if he'd been able to hold on. Instead, it brings up third down. These are the spots, this stage of the game, where it pays to have speed on the perimeter, doesn't it? It certainly does. And in the second quarter, he may very well run by him. But in this situation, I know as a defender, I'm loosening up a couple of extra steps that allowed him to run with him stride for stride. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Now Tannehill. And a big loss here as he's taken down. Brian Arakpo in there to drop him as the clock continues to roll. Well, we saw a close game that kept us on the edge of our seats down to that final whistle. And right before that final whistle, defense with one last exclamation mark there getting the sack to end it. I love how you phrased it because we were waiting to see what would happen. Obviously, we thought something would happen downfield. Instead, it happens in the offensive backfield, and that's your ball game. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gaunt, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. And with that, we sign off from Miami.